Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar today on the overview of virtual remote assessment. My name is Tracy Serzin. I'm the President and Operations Manager for PGLA. And I'd like to uh, first start out by uh, letting everyone know today on the webinar or on the phone uh, that on behalf of PGLA, we are wishing all of you the best and, and hope that everyone is keeping healthy and safe uh, with our current situation. So today we wanted to uh, conduct, conduct this webinar uh, to inform our clients or interested parties on what we are doing um, as far as continuing on with conducting assessments as planned. Um, as everyone knows, uh, the world is in quite a crisis at this time and uh, we have to all come up with alternatives to continue our businesses and our activities that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So again, welcome to the webinar. Today we are going to be talking about our process for virtual remote assessment and some guidelines and criteria for the assessors and for the laboratories participating in these type of assessments. Just a little housekeeping tips for today. This webinar is being recorded. As always, it will be available on our website under the past webinar section. Due to the high volume of attendees today, we have muted everyone. However, I'd like to draw your attention to the questions toolbar uh, that you should see on your far right. So if you have questions during the course of this webinar, please type them in and I will be answering them at the end of the presentation. Okay, so what we're going to be talking about today is, you know, why and when are we offering these types of virtual remote assessments? I want to talk to everyone about the validity and how we came up with determining that these assessments are a valid way of accrediting laboratories. Also, the expectations and guidelines of what the client should expect and also the qualifiers um, that go along with approving a laboratory to conduct a virtual assessment. And then again, at the end, we'll have time for an open Q&A. So again, you know, if you have any questions, please use the questions toolbar to type in your questions throughout this presentation. So let's talk a little bit about the virtual assessments and what we've decided when and, and why uh, we came to the conclusion that we need to start offering these and, and when. So as you can imagine with the crisis we have going on now with the COVID-19, this is the time to start this type of assessment technique. And the plan is to continue on keeping this assessment technique for anything that might come our way in the future uh, with travel restrictions or, or natural disasters. But we also took this opportunity uh, by creating this type of virtual assessment technique to possibly use this in the future. We at this time, we, we plan on conducting all assessments, accreditation assessments, renewals, surveillances through the virtual assessment approach. But in the future, we think that this, this particular technique or tool can be used for maybe lower risk type of assessment activities. So if you have a preliminary assessment as part of your uh, accreditation activity, this is something I think that we will be offering. Uh, scope expansions might be a, a good opportunity for this tool, and maybe even quality management system reviews. So although at this time our world is a little bit uh, disheveled here, we, we are looking at using this tool for, for future assessments as well. So it's important for all of you that maybe our, our client and are not due to go later in the year, it's good for you to also be educated on how this assessment tool will work. Our ultimate goal with these is, again, to avoid delays and lapses in accreditation. So for those that are already currently on our schedule uh, to have an initial accreditation assessment or renewal assessment, we are offering this as an option. However, we do need to be careful to make sure 
at the same time that the integrity of our investment continues in accordance to ISO 1711. So those that are not familiar with 1711, this is the ISO standard that accreditation bodies must adhere to. And in this standard, it talks about various different assessment approaches and rules for conducting assessments the way we do. So this was obviously the very first document we went to to see if this approach is valid. Uh, we want to make sure whatever we're doing is going to be okay with ILAC, which is International Laboratory Accreditation Cooperation, who oversees us for assessments and the processes we offer to our laboratories. So I wanted to point out a couple sections in 1711 here that drew us to the conclusion that this type of virtual assessment would be acceptable to do at this time. So one of the, the very first sections of 1711 talks about defining assessment and techniques. So there on the screen, you'll see several, several bullet points of different assessment techniques. And if you've been with us as a client for a while, you've already witnessed us doing these things when we do your routine assessments. However, one, one of the items here that is bolded is the ability to do remote assessment. Also in 1711, section 744, it talks about preparation for assessment. So this section really talks about uh, the accreditation bodies having a process and procedure for conducting uh, full system assessments for the entire scope of the laboratory. And there where I underline, it talks about that this can be in combination of on-site and other assessment techniques. Again, other assessment techniques, as shown on the previous slide, talks about remote assessment. Another part of 1711 under 793 talks about accreditation cycle. So this talks about our requirement here to reassess a laboratory every two years. And preferably to have it done on site, but where it's not applicable or where we need to use other means of assessment techniques, remote assessments potentially could be acceptable. So there you see I underlined the example of remote assessment. So with three, these three sections um, being evaluated by, uh, by myself and my team, we decided that doing the remote assessment would be a valid way to continue accrediting laboratories. I also would like to point out a uh, position from ILAC. Again, this is the recognition organization that approves and oversees the accreditation bodies. This is listed currently on their website where it talks about the potential impacts of coronavirus outbreak on accreditation activities. So I've included a link below, and I apologize, it's a little bit light on the screen. You can click on that link and, and see more about what they published. But even here, they pointed out um, that accreditation bodies may be considering other means of doing assessment activities. And again, uh, assessment activities here are defined as remote, or maybe even some might have to be rescheduled. So even I let themselves have put this out there um, for the accreditation bodies and for the laboratories to know what their position is on keeping our accreditation practices in line was 1711. Some other sources that we went to was through the IAF, which is the International Accreditation Forum. I'm not a member of IAF, but this is a similar body to ILAC, the accredited accreditation body, the recognized accreditation body that accredit certification groups. So they've actually created documents and had them in place for some time. Um, one of them was called IAF ID3 and IAF ID12. So we did take a glance at those documents when developing our own internal program. Okay, so just to recap, uh, just to give everyone a little bit of an overview here of what we have done to prepare uh, for these types of virtual remote assessments. So, so far, um, over the last week or so, we have developed uh, rigorous work instructions for the assessors, client guidelines. We've taken the time to modify some of our forms. Uh, we did training of assessors and, and now training of our clients. And we actually had the opportunity to trial a virtual assessment with the laboratory. 
So overall, we know this type of assessment approach will work. Uh, currently, we are scheduling virtual remote assessments. We've been doing those from uh, probably the last week or so, and so far, so good. Um, as you can expect, I mean, with just overall internet issues or uh, just user user end issues, you know, there will be some delays with doing these. Um, but again, so far so good as long as you are pretty computer or technical savvy um, with using these types of virtual systems. So now I want to talk a little bit about the expectations for you as a client. So again, uh, we have, as you can expect, uh, we've had received several phone calls with laboratories having to push off their assessment or um, ask for an alternative to not cancel their assessment. So this is this was one of those alternatives. Uh, we have now again implemented the virtual assessment reproach. Uh, we started out by creating a survey, which all clients will receive if they fall into this category. And some of the questions that we're asking is, you know, does your facility even allow for this type of virtual assessment? So just to explain what we're doing, um, we will be using a software system called GoToMeeting, very similar to what you're on now, which is GoToWebinar, um, where it gives the ability to use videos, use cameras, um, so we can continue to keep the client assessor interaction. But it also is a good software because it can be utilized on portable devices such as iPads or, or even iPhones and where you can log in and still use your camera so we can assess the laboratory. So the first question is, is does the facility even allow this type of activity to take place? Do you have the capability for these type of assessments? Meaning, do you have a camera? Do you have portable devices that you can use? And most importantly right now with the situation is, is your staff fully available? So if you're going through a full system assessment where you have multiple tests listed on your on your scope, we do need to be able to perform a full assessment of, of your entire lab, including your staff. So that will be you know, a pretty important player with, with being able to qualify for these types of assessments. Once we get your survey back, we'll review it. We might come back with some questions for you. And then we'll make the decision whether or not your assessment can fully be done via remote or maybe just partially. The assessment will then be scheduled as usual. And about one week prior to your assessment, you'll receive a calendar invite from our office, which is through GoToMeeting. And it will provide you a, a, a link to log into the meeting for the days you have scheduled. So if you're a three-day assessment, you will be getting a separate link for each day which is unique for, for that day. Also, there will be special instructions, similar to what we're gonna go over today, but also unique to how to use some of the features in GoToMeeting. So I wanna talk a little bit about how we're handling these different from a documentation and assessment criteria. So as you can imagine, uh, it's so important for the assessor to talk to the client a few weeks in advance so we have an idea of the setup of your of your system of your laboratory uh, what technicians will be able to interview at certain times uh, what your internal system looks like so they will be spending some time planning out your assessment but talking to you about these additional things that are critical to con conduct this virtual assessment so you will receive an assessment plan similar to you always have um, for routine assessments. Uh, we do plan on continuing eight hour days. However, there's gonna be time where we will provide you some breaks. Um, we also might have some downtime uh, where we will get off of the virtual meeting room for a few hours to review some of your documents that you might send via email. Again, these plans will be very specific to which activities are to be conducted. Um, our goal is to continue as much customer interaction as possible. 
Also, since these could be full system assessments, which means that we look at the entire 17025 system, including all tests on your current scope or the scope that you applied for, we do need to have a reasonable amount of time um, on our plan to make sure that we're witnessing enough tests or calibrations being performed. You can still expect an opening and closing meeting. Uh, you can invite through this go to meeting software we'll be using um, as many people as you like for your opening and closing meeting. We just ask when we start the actual assessment that you have the, the pertinent staff involved. Um, if you've used uh, virtual training rooms before, we do expect that the clients pop up their cameras. We can uh, we can see you as we're doing the assessment, but the more people you have, it gets a little it gets a little crowded. Um, so we we would just ask that we can uh, reduce the amount of people that are in the meeting room and only keep staff that are pertinent to that particular process. So we will be conducting quality management review. So this is through a lot of screen sharing. Uh, we also will, as we always have, ask you to submit documentation ahead of time. Uh, one thing that's important that, we've, that we hope the labs can respect in order for us to do a rigorous assessment, um, the assessors will select the records to be sampled. So when we're doing a quality management review, uh, we, we have your procedure, procedures already in advance. We're going we're gonna to want to have a, a little bit of a tour of your internal system. And again, this will be discussed ahead of time. But we will be looking at, for example, complaint logs. And we will be asking you which ones to send us. So we appreciate your assistance um, to provide us certain certain criteria ahead of time. But please expect that we're going to we're, we're trying to conduct these virtual assessments as if we were at your facility. So they will be asking you for which records um, they would like to see by by looking at random lists. The technical assessment. Again, we want to keep these as uh, rigorous as possible and what you're used to um, when we're on site. Um, we're going to be asking the same questions. We're going to want to see your instruments. We want to talk to your technicians. We want to look at some of your data. Now that that might be something you might send via email um, or you know ahead of time or even during the time of the assessment. We'll be looking at your reference standards and your records. So we ask that you please have a camera so we can continue appropriate assessor client interaction. Uh, when we assess the lab activities, please ensure cameras are ready and hardware is available to ensure stability of the camera. So this might be something a little tricky with, with the laboratories. Um, again, so far what I'm hearing that this, this has worked out pretty well uh, with some of the assessments we've already done. Uh, with nowadays the, the iPhones and the cameras and the phones are actually pretty good so we've been we've been able to do some virtual assessments through iPhones um, iPads have worked laptops are fine it just depends on the space of your lab and, and just to be clear if if your camera at any time we can't clearly conduct the assessment unfortunately this will have to be postponed so we recommend that if, if we're going to be starting an assessment say um, this Friday that on day before that you do test out um, how well your, your camera can actually see activities being done in your laboratory and, and adjust accordingly. In some cases, what we've experienced is that when we get into looking at lens systems and how data is logged, um, that is a little foggy on the camera. Uh, again, I think it depends on the device being used. So in those cases, we may ask you to take a screenshot. We will not be taking any screenshots from our from our uh, go to meeting software. We ask the laboratories take the screenshots. You might you might uh, hear that from some of the assessors ask you to do that, and then you can send it over to them so they can read it. Um, again, and we ask organizations that when we create the assessment plan, that we we try to stay on schedule. I wanted to reiterate that these virtual assessments will not be recorded. This is to protect client confidentiality. So like I said about screenshots, we will not be taking any pictures, any screenshots. We ask you to take care of that and send it over. 
um, and none of this will be recorded. And just like regular routine assessments that we've been doing, we will be issuing a final report, very similar to how we handle the on-site assessments. Uh, the only thing differently with that is that we will be notating that it was a virtual assessment. We will include in the details of the report uh, information about how much time we spent online, camera, the equipment that you use to be able to make this successful. Uh, again, we'll still be issuing you a list of nonconformities like we always have. So really the only thing different with assessment documentation you might see again is the actual assessment report will include this and your assessment plan will look a little bit different. So the software that we're going to be using is similar to what you're on today. It's just called GoToMeeting. So I put the logo up there so you can see if you want to check out the website to, to see how this works. Um, we decided that this was the most secure, safe, and reliable uh, software to use for these types of virtual assessments. We have, have purchased several licenses, so we're able to do multiple assessments in one day. Um, again, this GoToMeeting also can be used on iPads, tablets, and cell phones. And it's pretty user friendly. So I did put a link down here um, to go to gotomeeting.com for live demonstrations and some instructions. If you're scheduled for a remote assessment with us, I will be sending you out uh, some instructions. Again, talking a little bit about what we talked about today, um, but also uh, some some tips on how to use some of the features in GoToMeeting. So just to give everyone an idea how this will work, um, the assessor controls the complete uh, virtual remote assessment. They will provide you access as a presenter to be able to share your screen. Everyone will be able to see each other in the virtual meeting room. So, I mean, what we demonstrated so far, I mean, it really felt, I mean, pretty live. And I, I think that this is going to be a really great technique for us to use in the future. So we are, again, grateful to have this assessment tool in order to continue our daily operations and to meet all of your accreditation timelines. Um, we hope that most of our labs will be able to participate in this in order to avoid any delays in accreditation or any lapses in accreditation. Um, if for some reason you cannot qualify, uh, the plan is for us at this point to extend accreditation certificates if we have to um, and push your assessment out a little bit. Uh, we might start your assessment as another option if you can't have cameras in your lab. Maybe do the quality management system activity and then later on um, when this dilemma clears up, finish your assessment. So we, we have done a little bit of a variety of options for the laboratories. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is take a look at any questions um, that has been typed in from our audience. If we can just give me just a few seconds to take a look at those. Okay, while others might be typing questions, I'm gonna go ahead and start addressing some of the ones that were already typed in. So the first question was, is we have a new laboratory location that has the same management system that will be man managed as an independent location, not satellite. We intend on having the initial assessment conducted using the same monitor we have historically used with previous locations. Would it be possible to have this remotely done or would an on-site still apply? Well, that's a good question. So 
the intent again is for initial assessments, which this would be the case, once this clears up, that we would still like to plan to have on-site assessments. However, if you're falling into this category now where it's not possible for us to come on site, we can do these remotely. So I recommend that you contact our office staff, um, let them know when you're ready to add this remote laboratory. And if it falls within uh, this, the category now where we can conduct on-site assessments virtually, that's something we could, we can perform as long as you complete the survey. Okay, the next question is, will the GoToMeeting be recorded by the assessors for record traceability? Um, so I think I covered this maybe in the middle of the presentation, but we will not be recording the GoToMeeting. That's why our report's gonna be extensive to talk about how much time we spent on the GoToMeeting site, uh, what was used, which devices were used as far as cameras and portable devices to uh, ensure our assessments are successful. Okay, another question. We have two mobile labs and one in-house. Assessments prior are always at our in-house lab. Our mobile labs with current travel bans will not be able to make it to the assessment completed at our in-house lab. Will this be okay? Okay, so what I'm understanding from this is that there's a fixed laboratory that we uh, may accredit, but then they also have mobile units that also need to show accreditation. So if those mobile units haven't been accredited yet, um, we do, for mobile labs, we do accredit by, by VIN number and by the instrument that's inside of those mobile units. Um, we would, something like that is definitely a possibility. We can probably do this remotely to add that to your accreditation. If you're already accredited for the mobile lab, and you're due for an on-site assessment, the mobile labs cannot be brought to the facility, um, that's definitely something we can work out um, during this situation where we might be able to, to actually look at data. Um, so that's something I think that this should be brought up to our headquarters office as a, as a unique situation. Okay, another question. So existing 17025-2005 labs transition 2017 can be done virtually. Okay, so this depends on where you're at um, on your assessment schedule. So if you are transitioning and you are on a surveillance, but also you were scheduled for a transition, uh, what we're doing with those are actually just doing those through desktop only. If which means just through documentation, we would not be using uh, the GoToMeeting software. If you were due for a reassessment and a transition, then we could qualify you for a remote virtual assessment. So it depends on what type of activity that you're, you're scheduled to have for this year. If you just need a transition only, that can be done through desk, desktop review. Okay, the next question is, if there is any formal procedure to request an extension of the audit date, the date is already scheduled. The problem is that due to the health quarantine, there are shortages of supplies, and our government is demanding measures on the care of the personnel. Fortunately, my accreditation expires August 31st. So absolutely, uh, we will be offering for those that cannot get to their facility to do a virtual assessment, we will be allowing uh, extensions on on our accreditations, and uh, and we'll get in there as soon as we're able to. Uh, I'd like to to let everyone know to try if you can to do these because you know we want to make sure um, you know everyone gets this done within a reasonable amount of time. So if this is an opportunity uh, for you to get this done and get it off your plate, please make the effort. But if you absolutely can't, um, I lack. Uh, understands that the accreditation bodies will have to extend some of their accreditations out until we can get in to do the visit. Okay, 
Okay. Um, I have not heard about my assessments. It is usually done in June. When will we hear from you? So right now we are actually scheduling for June. So you should be hearing from us many times. Um, as all of you can imagine, we have spent a lot of time doing a lot of rescheduling and, and scheduling these virtual assessments. So we are, are experiencing a little bit of backup, but for June, you should be hearing probably hearing from us probably within this week or by next week for your assessment. Okay, next question. What types of info do you need to retain to ensure the assessment is validated? Okay, so prior to the assessment, I'm hoping I'm, answer, I'm understanding this question okay, but Prior to the assessment, we're gonna ask you for a list of documentation, just like we do now for regular routine on-site assessments that we will review ahead of time. Um, and the assessment being validated, we are performing actual assessments as we're at your lab. We're just on a computer watching the assessments or the technicians performed particular tests or calibrations. Um, you know, we just need to make sure that we're able to see this clearly. Um, again, we're going to want to see, you know, a, a tour of your lab. We want to make, make sure that all the equipment that you are currently accredited for is still intact at your lab. We're also going to want to see, you know, where you're storing things, your sample prep areas. So these are all things that you should expect with this remote assessment that we will be asking you to give us that, those tours of those certain sections of your lab. So we will, uh, ensure that we are documenting this in the report uh, to, to justify a valid assessment. Next question is, would laptops work well for displaying an assay procedure? Um, I think so. I mean, so far we've used, proceed, we've used laptops, we use regular desktop computers for this, uh, as well as even, like I said, iPads. So I, I think that we'll, it will be fine. Again, you know, if you're scheduled for a remote assessment or you want to you wanna try it out, I mean, take a look to see. Um, you could have someone on the other end to trial this with to make sure it's something that actually could work for you. Okay, next question, how do we witness how do you witness test methods, assessments, or, or witnessing by cameras? Um, so again, I just talked about this a little bit, but what we plan on doing is, you know, there needs to be someone on the other side that's on the laboratory that could manage the camera um, as we're watching a technician perform. We might ask you to move the camera, to zoom in the camera. So it is possible that we can do this. We're gonna ask a lot of questions can't see something, we're going to ask you to zoom in. Um, we might ask you to read something for us, to read numbers, identifiers. So this is definitely possible. Again, if we can't, if we can't do it, because there's, it's not, the camera is not uh, participating as well as expected, then the assessment might have to be delayed. Okay, another question. Will this be applicable for new applicants? So absolutely, we don't, right now with our world, we really don't know uh, and have an answer to when we will be able to conduct on-site assessments again. Um, we anticipate that we're hoping that, you know, by May we'll be back up and running and doing our normal on-site assessments. But again, I think it depends on each state. Um, every day, uh, this is changing for our world. So we really, we really don't know. So we are taking applications still uh, for laboratories to achieve accreditation and scheduling virtual remote assessments if we need to. Can a lab choose to skip the assessment for this year? It is a surveillance audit. The accreditation is valid till November. So the answer for that would be no. Um, we do require that the laboratories conduct some type of assessment activity every 12 months. So that is a, for example, an initial accreditation would happen in 2020, a surveillance is due in 2021, 
and a reassessment is due in 2022. So we will be we will be required to have some type of assessment um, with us, whether it's virtual or whether it's desk or on site, depending on when you're due. Um, you cannot skip your routine visit. Next question, our assessment covers three labs, all under one certificate. It is scheduled for four days due to travel between the labs. Can three labs log in to the opening meeting? Okay, so good question. So yes, all the laboratories that are involved with the accreditation assessment can log in. Um, you'll be only one person typically from uh, laboratory will receive the initial invite for the go to meeting. You can forward those on to whoever you want to to log in. Again, I just I recommend though that the opening meeting, the closing meeting is fine, but when we start assessing the quality system and maybe certain sections of the lab, you're going to want to ask some of the uh, attendees to log off because the meeting room starts to get a little crowded. Okay, we had a pre-assessment on-site and assessment is scheduled for May 18th and 19th. What is the time frame for doing remote virtual assessment? So again, we don't know. Uh, we don't know if, depending on where you're located, um, if we're going to be able to conduct the assessment as planned. What I recommend at this point is to keep your May 18th and 19th date as, as planned on-site. Um, what we're obviously what everyone is doing is just kind of paying attention to see what's going on as far as restrictions. Um, fill out the remote assessment virtual form. You can complete that if you talk to your scheduler in the office. Um, have that completed and ready. So if we do need to change it to a virtual remote assessment, we will do that. Um, at least two to three weeks before your assessment is due, we'll be looking at whether we need to change your assessment to a virtual style. Will the labs need to schedule virtual assessments over PGLA? How much time is given? Typically, the LF 116 states 30 days. Okay. Um, so we're still trying to to schedule, playing a little bit of catch up right now, um, but we're still trying to schedule the labs uh, 60 to 90 days out. So we will still ask for documentation 30 days in advance, and we will be trying to schedule these. Like you know, in advance as we always have. Um, for right now, if you're going again in May or June, we will probably schedule this as an on-site assessment with hopes that we'll be able to travel again. If we can't, then we'll switch it over to a virtual remote assessment. Is this webinar available to watch again online? It is. Uh, this will be again placed on our website under the recorded webinar, past webinar section. Another question was are there still places that are doing in person assessments? So at this time, as far as my knowledge right now, every assessment that we've had scheduled. Um, has been switched to remote or moved? Um, you know, that's a good question. I think that there's some that actually did take place where the assessors um, were local that just can drive over. So that's something that we still continue to do. Um, but again, a lot of any any assessments where required an assessor to fly in, those have been changed to remote assessments. Okay, so that concludes our questions, I believe, um, for this webinar. I would like to thank everyone very much for, for joining us today. Um, on this last screen here, I have my contact information, and if you want to go to our website to download this, this webinar, it will be available this afternoon, 
or you can give us a call. We are fully working. Um, so if you called our number, um, we will and ask for a particular person or scheduler or myself. Um, we all are luckily still working um, in keeping these assessments going. So we'd like to thank all of you. Um, have a great afternoon. And I'm going to go ahead and conclude this webinar. And if you have any more questions, please feel free to email me. Thank you. Have a good day.